So if you could tell me what happened in high school and how you got to college at 16 years of age. Um, as I told you earlier, I almost failed the eighth grade. And the guidance counselor called me in, and this was about a day before school was over with. And she says, uh, Tommy, what has been your problem this year? And I says, mm, didn't I know I had a problem, ma'am. She says, yes. She says, you are just barely passing. Compared to your grades from last year, you have hit rock bottom. I'm disappointed. And I mean, I felt bad. And I just said, well, I'm really bored. I said, it's the same old, same old, same old every day. There's no challenges. I've just lost interest in school. She says, well, I'm going to have your parents come in tomorrow. Take this letter home. Well, it was a letter and it was sealed. So I took it home, gave it to uh, Blanche. And Mr. Coleman was upset. And it was one thing after another. Anyway, we went back the next day and they told me, you know, I'm just barely passing. They're going to pass me. But I may have to take some summer courses. So, uh, and she said, he told me he's bored. And uh, she suggested... Bring him back next week to this office. I want to give him some academic exams. It'll be a couple hours. <coughs> you can drop him off if you want to. Well, they brought me back the next week. And I took some exams, and I didn't know what they were. And I remember when she gave me the paperwork, she says, Now, I want you to take your time. I want you to finish this, and when you're done, bring it into my office. Yes, ma'am. Within about an hour, hour and a half, they were done. I took them in. She says, sit down, young man. So I sat down, and she was studying, and she was going, and I don't remember how many questions on there, maybe 100, maybe 150. I don't know. It was just simple questions. And she looked at me, and she says, and you was bored this, this school semester. She says, then how come that you have just got every answer in this test? correctly and I said you told me to do my best she says unbelievable she says have your parents come back tomorrow so the parents the Coleman's came back and she showed her my test score and uh, she says uh, we're going to move him into Kathleen Senior High School for next semester instead of going to the ninth grade I went right into the tenth grade and I was the smallest kid at the cl at the high school, I guess. And uh, to make a long story short, within about three to four months in high school, I went in and took another exam. And I quit doing standardized high school work, per se, for the 10th grade. And they kind of moved me up a little bit the ladder. Well, when that school semester was over with, I went from the 8th grade into the 10th, and at the end of that year, they moved me right into the 11th grade. So when my first year in high school was over with, within four months, I had done ACE to 10th grade scholastics, and they had me in finishing up the school year with 11th grade algebra, um, calculus, uh, chemistry, I mean, they were really throwing some stuff at me. <clears throat> My second year, um, they let the Coleman's know that I would be going into a special class. Now, in the morning, I would go do phys ed, and uh, I would do basic, you know, an elective course, which was agriculture. I joined FFA, and but in the afternoon, I would spend four hours, just four hours, before I went home in a study hall class and they were giving me actual, and at the time I didn't know what they were, but they were college entrance courses. I mean, sciences, uh, creative English, uh, world history, uh, uh, American problems. There, there was a course called American Problems which went into uh, American economics and uh, race issues and uh, certain government issues and stuff. I mean, it was a course in a course. And uh, at the end of that semester, they told 
they called the Coleman's in and said that um, uh, we suggest you put him in the college for next year. And, and you went to college where? I went uh, that following year. I uh, I was thinking I was going to go to the University of Florida because I had a choice and I wanted to. I wanted to play football. I was too small. I was a pipsqueak. So they, uh, <clears throat> the college that they were going to send to, because I mean I was getting a, like a full scholarship here, but I had to take these specific courses before I went into a major university, and they sent me down to uh, North Miami Dade Junior College, and I went down there for almost, well, two years. My course electives that they told me that I was more apt to reach my goals was in journalism. And I thought this would be great because, uh, you know, like I told you earlier, I had a hero, and that was Big Daddy. Well, another man that I really admired was Walter Cronkite. You know who he was? Yes, I He did. was a news anchor. And I just liked the way that man talked. He worked at Channel 2. Yeah. And everything that he portrayed, I says, I can be that. I had this dream, I will be the next Walter Cronkite. Maybe minus the mustache, I don't know, but I never did get to go that far. But in my second year in college, I was I was right there graduating at, at the end of two years, and then I was transferring to the University of Miami, the big U. <laughs> but um, Uncle Sam was about to nab me. I was getting ready to get drafted because I came home out of my second year there at college. But I was making exceptional grades. I mean, uh, in journalism, uh, creative writing, typing, uh, um, doing uh, what they call uh, research points. And when I say research points, they would give you, okay, this happened uh, today research the powerpoints into this event and and i would and this was a case you know you had to really pinpoint on the whatever course or any subject matter they gave you and basically it was just standard journalistic uh uh news and, and you, so that you were very interested oh absolutely absolutely it wasn't like kind of high school where you were kind no, of uh, no, bored no no and it, it was a challenge it was a challenge and especially i learned how to uh pronounce my words. I, I learned how to uh, put my syllables and my nouns and verbs and pronouns, how to arrange them because I, I was, it was a mandatory, I had to take a creative writing course and I was learning this and I was making good grades. Now in college I wasn't making straight A's but I was making B's and I was making B pluses. I had a couple of A's but I mean well, you still have an, um... dreams, <coughs> yeah. ambitions. Visions. I wouldn't say I, they were like what they were when I was a child. And every now and then I would have a dream that really was strange. But they were they were now getting far and far between and were you still when you when you were having those dreams were you still telling your mama no about them no. no and was giles still because giles came into your life a few years back uh -huh. was giles still coming around giles found out that i was in college and giles didn't per se come see me, he would notify Coleman and them. And um, the reason I know this, Big Daddy would tell me a man come by named Giles. And uh, he said, he seemed like a nice guy. He said, I didn't talk with him that much. He talked mainly to, to your parents, your mom and dad. And uh, I remember Giles. And I said, well, that's good. <clears throat> Uh, at that time, when I made it into college, Big Daddy was living with us. Grandma had died about seven, eight months earlier, and he had sold the farm up North Carolina, moved to Florida, and was living with us. I mean, Big Daddy was up in age now. What's your grandma? Irene. 
What she pass away from? Uh, to this day, I don't know. I don't know. She was a very healthy woman. She didn't smoke. Now, Big Daddy smoked. He smoked a pipe and smoked uh, these little tiny Lucky Stripe cigarettes. Uh, didn't have no filters on. Did she? Did Grandma get sick? Do not know. All I know is Grandma had passed away. And when I, I mean, I was told Grandma has went home to heaven. Okay. And, uh, or Grandma went to, to stay with the Lord. And, yeah, I was a little sad, but I was also joyful. I mean, knowing a little bit then what I know now, um, I was always taught there's no pain and suffering no more, uh, and we will see them again. And in the later years, I would learn how true that is. Um, but Big Daddy, was he was up in age, and he just couldn't manage to the farm there in North Carolina by itself. So he ended up selling it. And How moved. big was the farm? Oh, God, it was uh, it was about 40 acres. And uh, Big Daddy raised tobacco. That's what he made his living off of. He raised tobacco. And I remember he sold the tobacco to uh, R.J. Reynolds out of uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They'd come down there and, and uh, cut it, stack it, load it up on the trucks, haul it off, and the workers were out of there. And so... How so, Big Daddy? So Big Daddy came to stay with you. Mm -hmm. So how were you excited about? Oh, that? I was. Sad. I was excited I mean, because sad that you lost your grandma. You know. Yeah, I I was excited he was coming. I mean, yeah, I was sad because Grandma was no longer around. Someone I could talk with and get a hug from her, and you know, just that loving feeling that grandmas can only give. But um, Sandra had got married and moved out. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, as I said, my bedroom was here, Sandra's was here, and the Coleman's was right here. We lived in a three-bedroom, one-bath house. It was a nice house now. And it was a middle-class neighborhood, as I had told you. But Big Daddy moved into Sandy's old room mm -hmm. and big daddy's like me uh he travel light and pack ready to go and uh, uh it, it was exciting i mean i i'd get to go in and say you know talk with my grandfather now i wouldn't have to call him or wait till he come down no he was in the house with me and we we'd go for walks we'd go to the train station again but i now i'm grown a little bit now I still had the excitement of watching the trains go by, just like he did, and uh, it was really good. And we'd go, we'd go to the flea market and get us a hamburger and a, uh, a cold drink and uh, chew the fat. And he used to say, "He says, boy, you're getting almost as big as me, but you're skinny as a rail. Your mama ain't feeding you, <laughs> you know, something like that." Uh, yeah, it was some good times. And what did he think about you wanting to be a journalist? He told me, he said, son, you can be anything in this world you want to be. All you got to do is set your heart to do it. And I, I knew that was true. I believed him. And uh, he said, anything that uh, you believe that you can do, and if you think it, it'll happen. I, live, I try to live by them standards today. If I think it can happen, it will happen. Uh, Big Daddy was supported it. He was motivational, and he gave me encouragement where I can't say Blanche never encouraged me, but I can say Mr. Coleman, uh, maybe he encouraged me in his special way. I just didn't understand his way. Uh, I mean, I wasn't, again, a challenging child, but I didn't understand a lot of his logic. We were... We was as different as day and night. Uh, he had his ways, and I had my ways. And were you going to college full time? Oh yes, yes, yes. I had classes four times, four times, four, four times a week. And I, I mean, I went four days out of the week. Now uh, I had classes on Friday, but I had the weekends off. I had classes on Monday and Tuesdays and Wednesday. I had one class on Wednesday, and it was a uh, it was a writing class, 
and it was a mandatory class. My, I mean, my curricular schedule was already set up, and I had to follow it. And see, I, I had me an apartment down on uh, uh, down near South Beach. It was paid for, and I at the time I thought the Coleman's were paying for it. I would find out years later, Uncle Sam was paying for it, but. Uh, I didn't go out and party. I didn't chase the girls like some of the other guys did. Uh, I studied, but uh, now I would go th on the weekends. I'd go down to the beach and get a good sunburn till I learned my lesson. And so you move. So, so let me understand this. So, sixteen, you're in college, mm -hmm. and then and Big Daddy comes and lives, and. And then you got your own place. I got my, my I got my own apartment. Yes. Before now I you had, were eighteen. Yeah, I had. Uh, there was two other guys from Lakeland that had went there also, uh -huh. and um, they had graduated. One of them had graduated from Lakeland Senior, mm -hmm. and another one had graduated from Santa Fe High, which was the Catholic high school there in Lakeland. And these two guys. Uh, I didn't know them, but I was told, I said, they told me, they says, now, there's going to be two other guys down there, they're, they're, I think they're a year older than you are, maybe two years, that are going to be going to the college also, and we're going to let you three share this apartment. We've got it all ready arranged, you guys got transportation, and anything you need, you let the guy who will be driving you wherever no. That was a college that set that. No, or no. This was the uh, this was my guidance counselor. Oh, okay. There, uh, Kathleen. So when I got down there, I had to take a Greyhound bus down there. I was picked up at the bus station by a young. Well, he he looked Hispanic. But he was white, but he he spoke Cuban. He was a Cuban, and he gave me my papers. And he says, Monday morning, I'll take you down. You're you're already enrolled. Uh, you take down there, and he says, this is my. Uh, this is my business card, and he says, I'm to take you guys around. He, now, did this guy work for the government? To this day, I don't know, but I knew everything was paid for, and when I, they took us down to, uh, to the South Beach, where the apartment was, I went, wow, this is, this is college life. Where have I always been? I mean, this was a nice apartment. Had to go up the steps, and there it was. We had the whole top floor. And I met these other two guys. Uh, the, the one guy I really remember was uh, uh, um, Daryl Daryl Glover was his name, and he was from uh, Santa Fe High School there in Lakeland, and uh, he was like two years older than I was. And me and him and the other guy uh, Lloyd Lloyd Davis, he was from Lakeland Senior, and. Uh, Lloyd was kind of quiet, but he, I mean, he was a nice guy, but he was quiet and he stayed to himself. We all three had our own bedrooms. We shared one shower there, but uh, no, uh, after two years, after two years, uh, when I went home for the semester, I knew my next year when I went back, now I was going to be starting at University of Miami. And there I would be getting my uh, Associates of Arts degree, worked my Associates of Arts degree in journalism. And how did that feel, being in your own place at that young age? Um, I mean, with two other guys yeah. that you didn't really know. Well, you... these other two guys were like big brothers to me. I mean, they were both, you know, a year, two years older than I was. And uh, I remember uh, Daryl called me Squirt. He says, come on, Squirt, let's go to the beach. Now, these guys were really good, and, uh, you know, it was, wow, I've got two big brothers. Yes. And, you know, the, uh, they were really good guys. Where they're at today, I don't know. I would like to think they've all succeeded in life, and they've raised families, and they're grandfathers now. They were really good guys. I mean, yeah. And uh, I guess... And did you go back home and see... Oh yeah, yeah. How often did you go home? Every six months, I got I went home. Okay. And uh, Blanche would call and say, "We've got you a bus ticket. Uh, go uh, have uh, the man take you down there 
to the bus station and we'll see you in about four hours at Lakeland. Well, four hours from Miami to Lakeland on Greyhound. It wasn't four hours. Maybe four hours in a car, but by Greyhound, it's a good seven hours. Because you hit every little chicken joint between here and there, you know. But anyway, I'd go home for, you know, a couple weeks and next semester's getting ready to start. I'd get on that bus and i got to go back south. It was good. I was out on my own. I had my wings and I was flying and I knew what I wanted to be. I knew my course. I knew my direction. And uh, I was out to make Mr. Coleman proud because he didn't think He's not going to mount too much. Mr. Coleman thought I was going to play football or maybe become a professional golfer. But I, I did play football, but and I was good at it, but I was too small. There wasn't no school that was going to give me a scholarship. And golf at the time, I mean, you had to have money to play professional golf. Mr. Coleman thought I could have played professional golf, but that didn't pan out either. And it wasn't, I mean, although I loved the game, it wasn't what I wanted to pursue. I would still play golf in my later years. Of course, I don't play it now. But uh, I think sometimes if I had set my mind at it, I could have been a professional golfer. But it was what Mr. Coleman was wanting me to be. But uh, I wanted to be what I wanted to be. And... I wanted to be a journalist. I had told myself I was going to be the next Walter Cronkite. And you know what? I probably would have if I hadn't got sidetracked. And as being sidetracked wasn't my choice. It was uh, Uncle Sam's choice. And we'll talk about that as we get along. So did you find the, the classes um, interesting? Oh. Or did they Did those classes... Because you weren't challenged in high school, did now that you're you're in college, so you're ahead of the game. I mean, you're ahead of people your age. Did the college classes? Did you feel challenged? Oh, absolutely, with those? absolutely. Because uh, I was taking creative writing and creative. There was one called Reporter. It was class called Reporter. And it was a mandatory class for me to get into the journalism school at the University of Miami, uh, and you had to have you had to have I think a a three point two grade average in it. And well, I was I had like a three point three three point four. I mean, I was doing good in it, but the courses they would give you a story. This happened today. News flash. This this just happened. We want you to write the the, the broadcast for tonight's news. And this was the challenge. You had to have your pronunciation spe uh, right. You had to have your spelling right. You was graded on expertise, how it was being presented, and spelling, pronunciation. It was a challenge. And that's what I, I really liked. I, I loved the challenge. Now, my pronunciation at times, eh, it could really stand some polishing. But my spelling was really accurate. And there wasn't computers back then. Oh, no, there wasn't no computers. Oh, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no, you, you wrote it out, and then you typed it out. And what you gave to your professor better be the final typed product. Here you go, sir. And the professor would be the acting editor. And he would grade you right there on the spot. That's what I loved. My finished work, here you go, sir. Spelt wrong. Pronounced wrong. B. Hand it back to you. You're graded right there. Wow. This is this is great. And there were some times I gave him the stuff and he says, Tommy, are you back there sleeping or are you just pecking at the keys? He says your your margin is off. D. I got a couple of D's. Don't think I mean I was making A's and B's constantly. I got a couple of D's because my margin on my typing might be off. I had to make sure that my my spacing was correct, that my my legibility was correct. And we at that time we had uh, uh, 
They were old style ribbon typewriters. We didn't have the electorate um, uh, Coronas and Minoltas and stuff like that. Oh, no, 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 no. We had the old style. And, and it was fun. I remember those. Yeah. <laughs> and in, a, in, 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 the, uh, in the classroom, uh, you had to concentrate on what you was doing because you had about 20 other typewriters singing and dancing with you. And it wasn't a case of who's going to get there up there first. It was a case of doing it correctly the first time. And that's what they were grading on. See, I didn't learn this until about two or three weeks after getting into the class. It's not outrunning this guy or outtyping this guy. It's doing the correctness correctly the first time. And once you're done, read it, proofread it, take it up there. You got graded right on the spot. And, and, and this was totally different than what I was used to in the high school. And it was exciting. It was a challenge. And I was doing good. I would have been the next Walter Cronkite. You hear me? I'm serious. I don't know if they'd let me on TV without a suit, because I just don't like suits. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, after two years, I had worked to my Associate's of Arts degree in... Uh, journalism, and I knew I was headed to the University of Miami, but Uncle Sam had a surprise for me. But we'll talk about that on the next session. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. <laughs>